In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about how to play the Engineer correctly. Now, the Engineer is a character in Hell at Loose that can build resource production nodes that can give the commander the ability to call on airstrikes, airheads, and so on, to fortifications like barricades, barbed wire, and bunkers for your team to defend. They also can do a bit of destroying and dismantling of enemy fortifications as well. All this and more we're going to talk about in today's tutorial how to play Engineer right. Now, at Hell at Loose, you do have different options for your classes and what you can run for the Engineer. So, you have two different types of Engineers, however. The Building Engineers and the Combat Engineers. So, what are the differences here? So, the Building Engineers are typically those who are, you usually find them in the behind-the-lines areas, usually on defense point, building up fortifications for your team, such as barbed wire, barricades, and bunkers. Whereas common engineers, they don't build anything. They can't build anything. Now, they can help with building, but they can't build anything or put up blueprints or anything like that. Their main role is destruction. So you'll see these guys on the front line helping the troops out, rather than behind the lines building fortifications. We'll start off talking about the building engineer. Now, you just spawned in a point. You want to build something because there's supplies nearby. You want to build defense for the team. Well, let's go through everything you can build first off. So... To do this, you need to pull out your wrench, as you see on screen, and you should see a menu that looks like this. Now, here are the things you can build. You can build up to four barbed wire fences, two to three vehicle blockers, such as two Belgian gates and three hedgehogs, if you're the Amer uh, Germans and Americans, respectively. Four barricades, which can block off roads or be used as cover. One bunker, one repair station, one fuel node, one manpower node, and one munitions node. And here is what it takes to build and then upgrade these items. Now, some of these buildings cannot be upgraded, such as the nodes, repair station, or the barbed wire. So that is just their general cost of what it takes to build them, and that's it. Other things like the barricade or bunker that can be upgraded cost certain amounts of resources. So keep that in mind. Your first objective as a building engineer is to build nodes for the commander. These will help you in two ways. One, the commander will be able to call in more stuff like more supply trucks, heavy tanks, airstrikes, reinforces, and so on. The second thing is, at least for your benefit, you get a passive XP bonus as these are alive. So every minute they are producing resources, you get 10 per node, 10 points per node. You, times is by three, you get 30 per minute which adds a lot to your XP. So there's at least something in it for you. Your team as a whole can have three of each node, which means three munitions, three manpower, and three fuel nodes for your team. You'll know that you have all three if each resource is producing 60 resources per minute. When it comes to the location of these nodes, it's important to try and put them as far back behind the lines as possible. Now, the munitions and the manpower node do offer some bonuses for the support players, namely in being able to refill their supply boxes and munition boxes at half the time, but it's still advised for the most part to keep them as far back behind the lines in the event that the enemy starts pushing your objectives and pushing you back. The best place to put them is on the borderline between your two HQ sectors and the rest of the map itself. So basically where you see the German lines or the US lines meet, that line, I'm marking it on screen now, you want to build them there. Reason being, if you lose your HQ sector, well you lose the game. But if you lose any other sector, you'll lose the nodes with them if they are taken by the enemy. So it's important to build them there, that way you can use a supply truck, build them on the borderline, and build them on your HQ sector. Once you've built your nodes, you can now move on to the defense point or area that you wish to build on for your defenses. Now, it's important though that you don't just start instantly building the moment you get to the point. It's important to have a strategy or vision for this. Now, what does this imply? Well, this implies you look at the area you're going to build on, get a lay of the land, and figure out the best way to layer your defenses, assuming you are the only one building defenses. Now, most of the time, you'll usually have another random engineer who's willing to build with you. But it's still best to assume that you are the only person building, so you have to use your strategy or vision around that. Now with this vision, you do have to think about practicality. Now, 
You have to think about this from a Blueberry's perspective or a teammate's perspective. How are they going to use your defenses? And are they truly useful? Say, from the garrison they spawn on, the outpost they spawn on, can they get to them in a timely manner? Are they already pinned down by enemy tanks or machine gun fire? Are they exposed from the flanks where the enemy can shoot them at ease and make the cover useless? These are several questions you need to ask yourself in this vision and making sure it's practical. One major principle of this is making sure that your vision or strategy isn't too lofty or too over the top. It's important to keep your defenses somewhat contained in at least around the objective, if not inside. And it's nice to have an outer layer of defenses as usually most of the objectives will either have buildings to be defended in or other rubble that can be used as extra cover. So it's important that your defenses are close enough and can be used effectively. Now, unfortunately, you do have two factors you have to take into account with these other principles, and that is supply and time. The first thing being supply basically comes down to how much supplies do you have and where it's at, such as its location and just in general how much you have. Do you have someone doing supply runs for you in a supply truck? Is the commander constantly dropping you in supplies? Are you the one doing supply runs? All this comes back as your time. So with the amount of resources you have, say you have all the resources in the world. Say you have 1,500 supplies spread around a point. Well, it's important to have time to actually build those defenses. You can have all the supply in the world, but if you only have two minutes to get defenses ready, you're not going to be able to use all that supply in time, especially before the enemy arrives. So it's important to know what supply you have, where it's at, and how much time you truly have. And the way you can know this is just being aware of what's happening with the map, communicating with your squad, maybe if they're on comms, seeing oh, how, how's it going at the one defense point, and then they give you a response, whether it's good, bad, ugly, whatever. So take all these into account when building your structures. Now, I could give you a defense line idea or anything, but that doesn't apply to a game like Hell Loose. Every position is different in its own right and has different parameters. The main things I would say when building defenses is just looking at the land, seeing what you could do to make it an all-around balanced defense. One major tactic I would include in most defenses, regardless of point, are the ability to make choke points. What areas can you wall off with barbed wire? What areas can you make that is blocked off by barricades, or what areas can you make into really good defensive positions that the enemy is gonna have to go around them, especially if they don't have satchel charges, which in most random battles, most people aren't gonna run satchel charges and destroy defenses. So by doing that, you're forcing them to take routes that they couldn't take, and that might give your team the edge in the long run and make the other team exposed. So that's just another major principle you can take into account regardless of defense point that you were on. Just making choke points and make it harder for the enemy to pick as many routes as possible to get into it. Limit these routes as best as possible. It would be a little rude if I at least didn't mention what the defenses looked like. So here they are. So on the U.S. side, on the left, you have the level 1, level 2, and level 3 barricades. And on the right, you have the German level 1, level 2, level 3 barricades as they go up. For their bunkers, same thing. You have the level 1, 2, and 3 on the top side here, labeled in the US 1, 2, and 3. And then for the Germans, you have Jur 1, Jur 2, Jur 3. Uh, these are the best photos I could find, unfortunately. Apologize for the quality. Now, the Soviet ones, since there actually isn't any photos about them, I decided to make something in game. So you have the barricades, level 1 on the right, level 2, level 3, as they're properly labeled. Then you have the Russian pillboxes. Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. One thing I mentioned about the bunkers, including the US-1, is that e even against airstrikes and bombing raids, the ceilings will keep you covered from a decent chunk of these. They're not perfect, but they'll keep you protected. Now, as a billion engineer, you do have a couple extra tools to work with, including two anti-infantry mines, and one anti-tank mine. You can use these to plug gaps in your defenses, such as barbed wire. If you've got a small gap, you can usually put those there and it'll at least slow down the enemy for a short bit. And you can use the anti-tank mines to put them on roads where you think enemy armor is going to roll up. Now, 
Even though you only get two infantry mines and one tank mine, you can play up to six infantry mines and four anti-tank mines. So once you respawn or you need to redeploy, you get killed, whatever, you can go down and place two more infantry mines, which would bring you up to four, and then one more anti-tank mine, which bring you up to two. And you can keep doing this until you're on your inventory max. So just note, if you do try to place more than six infantry mines, the ones you placed in order will start to disappear. So the first mine you lay down will disappear, and then if you place another one, the second one will disappear, and so on. This goes with the anti-tank mines as well. The last thing I want to touch on for the Billion Chair is that you do come equipped with a blowtorch. Now, this blowtorch allows you to repair tanks or other vehicles that have taken damage, which effectively makes you a tanker's best friend. This is because that way, if you are around and are repairing tanks, it allows the tank crew members to stay in their tank and not be killed trying to repair their own tank, and allows them to continue doing their job, such as drive the tank, use the gun, or simply spot targets, or all three at once, depending on the scenario. But if you're able to help repair tanks, this keeps them in the fight, and it, it endangers the crew less. And you do get a little XP for constantly repairing tanks. Now, there's more to Engineer than simply basically playing Minecraft Simulator. There's another class called the Combat Engineer, whether it's the Sapper or the Pioneer, depending on which station you play. And your job is to make a lot of explosions. For this class, the Combat Engineer, as I'll call it, just for simplicity's sake, you get a very unique tool called the Satchel Charge. Only three classes have it, and yours is one of them. Now, to unlock this class, you need to be at least level three. Once you're level three, you'll have access to this class. All three countries have it, and you can get it at the same time. And you get the Satchel Charge. Satchel Charge is a very effective tool at destroying buildings and vehicles alike. It has about a 50 meter explosion radius where it can take out buildings and damage, if not destroy, vehicles. And if you attach it to vehicles, that will be a one shot. No matter where you put on the tank or a vehicle, it will blow it up in one go. Now, unfortunately, there are a couple downsides to the satchel. One being, you unfortunately cannot destroy default buildings, such as already placed barbed wire that the game already has in. Now, the satchel, even if you place it on these structures, can still take out things around it. As you see there, uh, there's a couple barbed wire fences there. I placed a satchel on it. They didn't blow up, but the supply and other things around it did go away. So there is that to keep in mind. That's what that explosive radius comes into play. Secondly, you have to be stationary. So if you're trying to put these on moving tanks, if they're going fast enough, you're not going to be able to place these satchels on them. They have to be going slow enough for you to actually get the satchel charge off. So keep that in mind when placing it on vehicles. The third and final thing I'd say is a bad thing with the satchel is because of its explosive radius and just a little indicator that pops up, when you place it, the little red circle, it seems like your teammates like to go towards it like it, like they're moths to a lamp. It seems like whenever you say, satchel charge, satchel charge, get away, get away, they seem to only get closer and not away from it. So be wary of where your allies are at all times when placing the satchel, especially if you're on the front line and you're trying to clear the way for them because you might incur some allied casualties in that sense. So just, just... Be careful with that. Overall, Engineer isn't an overly complex class to play, but it does require a little bit of strategy, a little bit of critical thinking, and just a little bit of awareness overall to make it work to its full potential. You have many different ways you can go about this class, and it's very versatile as a class compared to many others. So you do have many different ways you can play this class. But above all, get those nodes up. It just helps everyone in the long run. And that's about it. I hope you appreciated the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.